you know, there are different packaging formats for, for Linux. You know, we have Snap, we have Flatpak, and we also have App Image. Like those are the three primary packages that you can use to install apps. And it's always been, you know, install packages from your distribution in the past. And then now we have Snaps, now we have Flatpaks, now we have App Images. And there's, there's a lot of information about the differences amongst all three of them uh, from, a, from a user standpoint. But what about from like a developer standpoint? Because the experience is quite different. Like using one of the package managers versus creating one of the packages in one of those formats is a, is a much different experience. You know, like when I, when I create a snap package, it's different from creating a flat pack package in in certain aspects. So which one's actually quote better? I think that all just really depends on your experiences with, with creating packages. And, you know, for example, when I create a, a snap package, I find that it's quite easy. There's a lot of controversy around, you know, which formats better is snap better or, or flat pack. And, you know, the, the criticism that snap gets is that the store is proprietary, like it's closed source. And, you know, that's, that's a valid point, but why is it that, for example, um, like steam, Steam has has made a lot of advances with uh, gaming on on Linux, and they usually get nothing but praise. And Steam is proprietary, but you know you can run proprietary games on Linux much better than you were able to in the past, thanks to Steam. And at least with Snap, a lot of it is open source like Snap itself and the Snapcraft utility. But it's just the the store end of it that's that's closed source. So so what about Flatpak? Flatpak is all open source. From what I gather, I don't think they have anything that's closed source. So recently I finished making LVN Auth, which is a, a visual novel creator application. And I've gotten to the point where now I need to decide whether I'm going to make it into a snap package or a flat pack package or app image. So app image is different from flat pack and snap in a sense that it's not really sandboxed uh, by default. You can make it sandboxed with a third party utility uh, jailbreak, I think is what it's called, but it's, it's just meant so that you can download an app image, make it executable, and then run it. So you would download a file from the developer's website or the software's website, and then you would download it, mark it as executable, and then double click on it or just run it uh, in in the terminal. With Snap, there's a a store. And with uh, Flatpak, there's also a store, although it's not limited to just one store, whereas with Snap, it's limited to one store. Nevertheless, I haven't seen multiple stores for Flatpak. Uh, the main store is Flathub, and the main store for Snaps is the Snap Store, which is maintained uh, by Canonical, the creators of Ubuntu. So the first thing I did is I tried to make a Flatpak, and... To my surprise, it actually went well in the initial stages. I got it to the point where my Python files were contained in a flat pack. Then when I went to run the flat pack as a test, uh, TCL or, or was a TK, it, it complained that it can't find the display server. And the display server is actually a pretty big deal. Like the display server is what manages things on your screen like if you don't have that you won't get anything on the screen or at least not on a not with a GUI program like a graphical user interface program then I went and I attempted to create a snap Uh, now mind you I had created a snap back in 2019 with my first snap but it was so long ago that I had to pretty much relearn everything 
So it was, you can pretty much call it my first time because after a few years, you kind of forget, you know, what the configurations should be like. Nevertheless, I spent a day to get Snap working with my application, like as a Snap package, and it worked. It worked beautifully, actually. Um, I had to fine tune it a little bit here and there, but it wasn't a, a big deal. Um, I was able to read the documentation and you know see some examples, and I was able to figure it out. Now, mind you, the documentation for Snaps and Flatpak, they're not great, um, but I find that the documentation for Snap packages is a lot better than Flatpak's documentation. App image, I didn't even try to create an app image. And the reason is I don't really want to support that format in a way that the reason is I don't want my users to have to download the file, mark it as executable, and then run it, and then have to manually go and download the next version and then run it again. Um, it, It just seemed kind of backwards. I know there are ways to make an app image uh, updatable, but I I checked out the documentation in the past and it did not seem very straightforward. Uh, So I limited my options to Flatpak and Snap. And I think I've decided to go with the Snap as my main uh, packaging format for my applications, specifically for LVNOS. So I'm happy to announce that my first beta release is available uh, for LVN Auth. And again, for those I don't that don't know about LVN Auth, it's a visual novel creator application. So you can see it here now on the website, uh, lvnauth.org. And that's actually a real visual novel uh, that I'm working on. And the editor is behind the visual novel and the uh, the story that you're seeing, that's the visual novel player, um, which is all part of the same application. They're not two separate applications. Um, but if you wanted to try it out uh, for Linux, it's currently only available for Linux. Uh, you can just click on download and you can click on the download link here, which will download a snap file. It's not distributed in the snap store now um, at the time of this video. Um, right now it's October the 9th, uh, 2023. So right now it's not, I I haven't uploaded it to uh, the Snap Store, but I will soon. Uh, So if you're watching this video like later on, um, you should check it out in the the Snap Store. Just do a search for LVN Auth. But for now, uh, it's only available uh, from my website, lvnauth.org. So once you download the Snap package, uh, you basically just have to run this command Uh, so snap install and then the name of the file and then uh, dash dash dangerous the dangerous flag is needed uh, because it's not a uh, a verified snap because i haven't uploaded it to the store yet Uh, so for snap packages that haven't been verified or published to the snap store um, they're considered unverified therefore you have to put dash dash dangerous in order to install it But later on, after it's been published to the Snap Store, you just have to put Snap install LVN Auth, and then that's it. So yeah, I just wanted to say my my experience with creating a Snap has been um, very nice. (laughs) I've been actually very happy with uh, Snapcraft, which is the tool for creating Snaps. And flat packs are good too. I honestly think both formats can coexist happily. I've honestly haven't encountered any issues using snaps, even though it seems to be popular uh, to to criticize snaps because of its uh, proprietary backend. Uh, but that doesn't bother me. I think Canonical's actually doing a great job with uh, with snaps and 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 the documentation for it. Oh, I I got stuck with a couple of things for for both. Flat packs uh, for when when I was creating the fl- uh, flat pack, and also the uh, the snap. So first, I started creating a, a flat pack. So what I did is I went to the forum for a flat pack, which is a, a discourse uh, website, and I posted my question. 
uh, about the display server not being found. I was wondering if anyone else ran into that because it you know, seems kind of serious when they can't find the display server. And I tried a whole, a whole bunch of other configurations and, and none of the configurations worked. And the answers that I got, they didn't help. It didn't solve the issue. And then I just left out of that. I went to creating a snap and it worked flawlessly. I, there was no complaint about the, um, the X11 display server not being found. I didn't even have to do anything extra for that. It just, it just worked. Then I had a question about the snap package in relation to where they're actually like stored. Um, I thought they were stored in a different folder, but turns out they were actually not in that folder. They're in a different folder after the snap package gets created. Nevertheless, I posted my question and minutes later, I got a response with the answer. So the, the, the forum that Snapcraft uses for developers to, to get assistance is actually really good. With my experience, I was able to get some fairly quick responses. So that's another big bonus. Uh, so again, as far as like using a snap and using a flat pack, it's pretty much the same. From a, from a user standpoint, you may not actually notice a difference between the two, or you might favor one a little bit over the other. Uh, but the creation and the development side of, of creating a, a package in one of those two formats is a lot harder. It's not easy creating a, a snap package or a, uh, or a flat pack package. Um, both of them require some studying. In, in my case, I had to actually change the code of my application to make it snap aware. In fact, I have code in my project, which basically checks to see if it's in a snap container, if it's being executed in a snap container. And if it is, it has to look for certain files differently uh, versus if it's not being executed from within a snap. So these are the, the things that I had to do, like the changes I had to apply to my code just to make it run properly. Because when, when your application is confined in a sandbox, it's, it's, it's trapped. It, it can't do a lot of the things that it was able to do when it was outside of the sandbox for security purposes, obviously. And when your application is confined, there are connections that you can use uh, in the case of Snap and flat packs like that too, where um, if you think of it, you can, let's say if your application is inside a box, you can have your ap application poke holes in the box to access certain things. Like in the case of my application, LVN Auth, I wanted it to be able to get access to the home directory. Um, so I added that permission as, as an interface, uh, as, a, as a connection. So even though packages can be confined in a sandbox, the application still has the potential to, to poke a hole and then access what it needs to access. And then the user will typically have the option to turn off those uh, permissions if they, uh, if they choose to. But at that point, the application won't run you know, the way that the developer expects it to, to, to run. And in my case, I try to, to give my program the minimum requirements that were required to, to make it run properly. I remember when I created my first snap, which is a program called Open Resizer, uh, also as a snap package in, in uh, Linux, I, I gave it too many permissions. Like one of the permissions I added in my snap package was the ability to record audio like from a microphone and I didn't know what I was doing at first so I'm like oh yeah let's just use that permission and that permission just to make it run and then you know it worked so I was happy with it and I'm like yep let's send this over to the snap store and then one of the permissions that it shows that my program needs is um, audio from the microphone or recording from the microphone and I look at that and it's like I don't even use audio in my application for resizing images. Uh, why did I even add that? So um, I'm, I'm more careful now not to do the same thing. Uh, and I haven't touched the code for open resizer in a number of years. I have to eventually revisit that, I think, and, and fix that. Um, but yeah, my, my experiences with uh, creating snaps has been positive. 
I've been very happy with uh, with using Snaps. So if you want to try out my uh, new application, um, again, it's just on lvnauth.org, and there's a download link there. Um, I'm going to eventually create a video dedicated to LVN Auth. Uh, this was mostly just about Snaps and flat packs and a little bit about app images. One thing to note about like snap packages is if your application can't for some reason be contained in a sandbox, like if it's in a sandbox, it just simply won't work. Um, IDEs like programming code editors and things like that come to mind. In cases like that, you can actually request classic mode like for your snap so that it's not confined in a sandbox. But to do that, you have to ask for permission in the snap store. Um, and you can do that like on their, on their forum, you can ask to, uh, to, to, to get the ability to run in, in a classic mode or classic format, uh, with your, with your snap so that it's not confined. But the, the, the guys at Snapcraft, they have to like the team there, they have, they have to check and, and ask questions to see, you know, why it needs to get access to, to everything. And if your reasons are valid, they'll, they'll, they'll allow you to, uh, to, to do that. So, um, your snap package doesn't necessarily have to be sandboxed, but, um, it's better if it is, and it's actually easier than, cause then you won't have to go through that process of asking for, for permission. You just, uh, do it the, the regular way. Uh, anyway, I, I hope this was useful. Um, I, I'm going to steer my videos more towards general Linux development questions. I'm still going to have tutorials, but I want to also have uh, material and videos covering Linux in general uh, on the development side of things, you know, especially with Python. So, uh, oh, and by the way, if you want to support my videos and, and what I do, I have a donation page on Ko-fi. Uh, so the link is up on the screen now. So if you want to check that out, uh, and support me, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, until the next video, uh, take care and have a nice day.